Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 16 and the 12 days of Zentangle and this is day 12. Oh, I went by so fast, right? My name is Rick. This is Maria. And today Maria is going to do some assembly first. Yes, we're going to uh, stick together uh, a Renaissance tile and a black tile and then uh, we're going to wait for that to dry. It doesn't actually take that long, right? Don't, don't yeah, here in here in the north, that? here in the north, <laughs> it's very dry. <laughs> <The North> Pole. <laughs> <laughs> and it's what it feels like, actually. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so just putting that evenly, and you can hold it down with the uh, impressor there too, so if you don't want to put your finger on it. And just just get it centered, or just get it where you want it before you start to put a a lot of pressure on and because uh, it once you do it it that area will stick so we have this nice canvas and I loved I actually love this thing working on a, a double-faced mm. uh, zendala or, or tile it gives it a different uh, texture of I mean in firmness so these are the materials we're using and loving and appreciating and we've we're going to use one of these uh, these uh, other zendalas just to trace it. So we're going to take a, a piece of scrap paper. Oh, that's the one you put together, right? Yeah, put, we're going to take a piece of scrap paper uh, and your pencil and go around. doesn't have to be too dark. And cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. I used to yell at my brothers and sisters, cut it out. Actually, I didn't yell. I, I kind of whispered because I, I didn't yell. <laughs> so once this is, uh, is done, and just take your time with this, because the symmetry lets so you find the center. Right. So we want to fold it in half and half again. This is the real simple way of finding um, the center. We needed to have sort of a precise center in this particular project we're doing. So just line up those corners, make a nice. Now I want tight. you all to realize that this is going to be a great tool to have in your toolbox, and not to throw away this piece of paper. Um, so we're going to uh, pierce the center as close to the center as you can, and then just just save this because we're making making these tools, and if you wanted to be, be able to uh, divide a circle into eight, well. So we're gonna line those the lines up and fold it again so that we have an eight, uh, eight sided. Uh, or eight piece, eight pie piece. Yeah, yes. So I think the uh, uh, Marcus Operendus did that right, right. the, the yeah. first time, but if you don't have a Marcus, this is another thing, Can another way. Make your own. Awesome. So now that you have that, you can uh, you know keep that in your Zentangle kit just as a a nice reference for finding centers and dividing in quarters, halves, or eighths. Right. So make sure it's exactly in the middle of your zendala, and we're just going to mark the middle. So now we have the center. Perfect. Now pierce this with a, a large needle like what I'm using, or a nail. Um, and this will all make sense. Yes. So this is useful for when somebody else finds it and they uh, and they say, what's this for? And I'm just marking these against this is what you'll use to uh, uh, someday mark off a, a Zendala if you are doing a, a, a more balanced piece. And we invite you to, to make your own strings and divisions and... 
and here I am doing this bizarre <laughs> amoeba-like right. thing. As long as it comes together in the end, this is your string. How cool is that, right? Well, it's like a giant Pangea frag, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. reticula. So we're going to uh, aura this. With the micron PN, I think. Yeah. Turning your tile. Awesome. Right? Yep. So Maria's going to have her own way of making uh, these divisions. And just so eyeballing, I'm, right? I'm eye eyeballing this because it didn't have to be exactly right mm. for, for this particular project. So once you pick one side, if you line that up with the center, it'll automatically be right but you where can you see, want I'm, it. It's not in the middle of that pan Pangea. Right. So all of this is relatively approximate. <laughs> right? Beautifully approximate. Right. So restate that. And we're going to uh, aura on both sides of it. So restate that line, aura left and aura right. Again, I keep marveling at the beautiful texture just of those lines. Even when you make a straight line, <laughs> it's got character all the way. Right. That's awesome. Uh, we're working with the uh, PN, and the PN, uh, you can press quite hard mm. and get uh, different. I mean, you can press real hard with the other ones, but I don't know how long the tip is going right. to last. Uh, but these PN, the plastic nib, that's why it's called PN, um, allows you to do that. Right, it probably sounds like to some people we just don't know how to pronounce pen. Right, a PN. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to mark off every other... Uh, well, wait a minute. Uh, I wanted you to mark off every other one, but let's let's go through and mark all of them. <laughs> this is what happens that. when you make a mistake that actually doesn't make that much of a difference. So let's try this again. In every other one of these spaces, let's delineate it so that we'll know which ones to use. Okay, so the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to aura that dot on every other one. So sorry, guys. But that's part of what we say all the time is if you make, uh, you know, an unanticipated change, just repeat that change and it becomes a new pattern. <laughs> like here. I, you know, <laughs> trying to do this on camera is always a little bit different than having a wonderful meditation by yourself. <laughs> and, and so at this point, well, let's, let's walk our own talk and, well, what can I do with this? Right. So I'm going to start out at, on each one of these sections that have the, the aura dot mm -hmm. with a beautiful spiral. And we're going to do printemps, which is uh, one of the uh, tangles we, we first teach when we do like a beginner's class or, you know, when, when we're not sure of the people in the, in the class if, if they've ever done Zen Tangle before. Um, it's a great... Uh, tangle that teaches you how to use the principle of halaba in in a different way and we'll usually uh teach this we we teach aura or crescent moon first which teaches aura and then we teach halaba which teaches drawing behind and then if we do prenta you'll notice that prenta is auraing itself and then the relationship to the ones next to it is drawn behind. So you can see when I go to do an, another one of these spirals, I go up close. I start up close so that it has to go behind. Mm. That way, it, it's a more interesting composition than just having them, you know, circled around evenly. That's kind of fun, right? And I like in this case where some, they're not all the same size. Right. 
sort of a... Uh, yeah. Like what you did with the tipple in right. the other one. Right. So going into the middle, and, and that's pretty much going to be the, the larger of the, uh, of the crew. It's going up s close to it and going uh, behind when you, as you're coming around those uh, spirals. And it makes sense that the, the one closest to you might appear to be the larger one. So you did get the alternating. I did finally get the <laughs> alternating thing going on, which was important for this particular uh, piece I'm doing. So we're going to uh, aura that uh, dot in the middle, that hole, and... Um, Sort of the sort of diameter it's a bigger or than the diameter about the diameter close, yeah. a little bit a little bit bigger. Always, uh, you know, if, if you can, auraing to the side of the item you're auraing in a way that doesn't cover your reference line. So those little triangular things are pointing. Like petals or something, yeah. So They're like pointing a, to Like the a compass rose almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little detail. So we're, we're going to be doing a tangle called... Uh, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Lamoth on, uh, what was it called? It was based on a dream catcher. Like a dream, I think he called it dream catcher. Okay. So after we put in those triangular shapes, we're going to make a V, a V shape that joins the tips. And that's exactly, how you just keep doing that. And if you keep the, the, uh, this, the curve of the line that you're extending, you can see that the curve, ex it, it uh, elongates. Is right. That, is that it gets bigger it? because the, the top of the V is wider, so you necessarily use a bigger V. And if anybody's ever strung a dream catcher, you know, you start from the outside and they get smaller as you go to the center. But when you draw a dream catcher... Right. You use this to start from the center and go That's to the a outside. Beautiful, beautiful uh, image, right? And when you think of it, this is another uh, reticula. Yes. Well, we're going to use it as a reticula today. Right. Right. So, taking this new idea for a spin, and then as it gets to that uh, random Pangea shape, it just goes behind. But you notice Maria draws literally behind, so you get a sense of, as you hover over it, where it would be. And these don't have to be exact. They, they'll have character of their own, and you'll figure it out as you go yeah. along. So now let's put something in them. We're going to do a crescent moon starting out in those first triangles, just one moon in each one, you can see how cool is Crescent Moon on its own like that. Right. And again, that nice solid ink is a great focal point. Corner to corner, fill it in. Aura. Just do that all the way around. Sort of a Dr. Seuss-esque thing yeah, going on. It does on. look like that, right. So in the next one, we're going to do a, uh, maybe a, a curvier version of it because they're no longer triangles. They're more of a... Like a, a, like a diamond shape. Like a diamond or squarish right. kind of shape. So nestling that right in the corner... And then again, aura. So that's the the second round of these. Right. 
So you'll be doing eight of each of these because you have eight points on, on this uh, compass rose here. Right. Uh, right. And remember, you know, rotating your tile. She's leaving, left a few highlights there, I see. This I love. I love the simplicity of this whole tile so far. You know, right. um, really basic tangles. Right. So on the next uh, flight around, we're going to add uh, some uh, like bales. Like, ask a, like, a... like bales uh, from corner to corner, like a curve, like we were like we were tracing a zendala. Right. Right. And it's now, actually like she on. Yeah, Remember yeah, yeah. that pattern. Yeah. yeah. So again, we're going to go in, but we, we've changed the shape of the, of the uh, interior just a little, just for, for fun. All right, so the aura doesn't go over those uh, bales-like shape. Right. And if you look up um, in the newsletter, I think we did a uh, release of Xion, which is... Uh, spelled C-H-I-L-L-O-N. And it was a pattern we saw on a door in an old castle in, um, in Montreux in Switzerland. Yeah. It was beautiful. The Chateau yeah. de Chillon. That looks really nice. And leaving that little empty space makes a big difference. So again, we're going to do that uh, chillon or, or bales shape, which changes the shape a little bit of the, uh, the interior. And these are all simple patterns that, that uh, crescent moon, it doesn't get more simple than that. Mm. So really taking it back to basics here with the tangles we're using. Enjoying where they would be in all those shapes. Oh, cool. So I, I, I just needed to put some Knightsbridge in. I, I, I had gone a day or so without doing Knightsbridge, and it's just, it, it's all over our house. And, Not and gonna I, happen. <laughs> <laughs> this just makes me smile when I see what it, it, it that's why I have it around the house is that I can you know grab my smiles whenever I want them right so you always have Knightsbridge in your pen yes and Maria has some uh ribbon that's like Knightsbridge and it, it finds its way onto many things yes and you'll see it in some of the pictures of that if you're following this on the 12 days of Zentangle, that a lot of the, the characters in the tableaus are wearing Knightsbridge. Right. Okay, so then we have these random dots there. What are we going to do with that? Because they weren't supposed to be there. So let's, let's draw a diamond shape, like a, a, a diamond shape around each one and see where it takes us. I was going to leave them blank, that, but you know what? I think I'm going to like having just the, the little... Uh, uh, ding, ding bat in there. Yeah, and it echoes the diamond shape inside the uh, Dreamcatcher too. So sure. I like that. True that. And you've got, you have an alternating thing going on because you've got the round prenta alternating yeah. with the straight edge diamond. Okay, what should we do? Okay, aura. aura <laughs> when in doubt, aura, aura is your friend. And again, you see how. Maria, turn the tile so you can easily orient your line. Okay, so we're going to do that bales thing again to make it sort of go with the in interior. How fun is that? Right, very simple. And again. And that dot just disappeared. I don't have to Where'd worry about go? that dot looking <laughs> Where me in the face. Where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. So now you have a jewel in each corner. Yeah. That's kind of fun, right? I like that random shape. That really is brilliant. 
with the uh, the Pangea in the beginning? Yeah. It's just so unexpected because everything else is so symmetrical. Right. I had to shoot that down right from the right. beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just not a symmetrical Asymmetry guy. warning. <laughs> So let's give these a little bit of dimension here. So Adding graphite. You can see that, that, that really dark stuff in the middle. Mm. So now it's uh, looking almost like it's being crocheted or something, right? Yeah. You can see the setup for getting the tortillon out here. Just pointing the, the tip of the pencil where you want it. The stripes in the end, the, the uh, black dots, they almost look like bees, right? A mm. bunch of bees buzzing around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those could be wings. And holding your tortillon at a low angle. And I love this, the darkness in the center. See how that gets really dark. Mm. I like that. Just leaving a little bit of highlight there. Turning your tile. And then just inviting all of that graphite into the paper and just just touching it, even if it doesn't go, if even if you got moving it to a different place, it has this like you said, it the graphite takes on a different character. Right. So let's uh, um Add graphite all around the edge here, so that we that uh, first larger uh, spiral that you put down still comes to the foreground. Yeah, it really gives that sense of alternation there. Right. So now you can see uh, the shadows uh, bringing bringing the light up. And look how much the white part of the Knights Bridge jumps out in contrast to the, the shadow mm -hmm. next to yeah, it. Yeah. I like this. This is some this is something new that it, we've been doing or Maria's been doing, which is this orid shade orid shadowing. So we're just going in in the bumps there, you know, mm. I don't know what else to call that. And um, adding some graphite and then we're going to slowly dissipate it throughout there. Is that the right word? It'll do. It'll do. <laughs> <laughs> so watch this. This is just magic, right? Right. It's very fun and very simple. Great effect. And you can use this around any tile or, I mean, any, any shape that has some space around it. Just aura the graphite a little bit away. And then you can tease it out with the tortillon. Oh, you, you almost don't even see it, you know, you, except that you, you wonder, oh, has is, is it been cut up? Is right. It, what, what is it? It looks like it's uh, doing strange things. And the result is this, this whole presentation that looks really complicated, but you know that each step was very, very simple and deliberate the whole way along. In these project packs, we, we try to teach you as many things as possible that you can add to your own mm. tiles in, in a sort of similar way, but in, in your head, how it translates. Right. Make it your own. Yeah. So we're going to add, uh, uh-oh. So we added the white charcoal. Uh, added the white charcoal, yeah. Yep. And now we're going to go and highlight those little um, crescent moons. Just adding a little bit of sparkle there. And even in that, and you're using the white. And it's sort of like uh, in the dark one, it's like the uh, yin-yang symbol. In mm. the dark one, there's a white spot and then the light one there's a dark spot pretty cool so we're gonna um, bring those uh, 
first uh, spirals up. Sort of just lifts them off the page. It's pretty sweet. And I think this is another action of, uh, you know, responding to the tile and how the tile communicates with you. So with the white jelly roll, we're going to put a, a, a very up close to the edge. Um, aura. Or around the edge, yeah. And a light pressure on the uh, jelly roll. That's right. all it takes. In fact, it actually works better. With a you light can pressure, see me just clear the uh, the tip, and I find that these these particular pens work better in a vertical way as opposed to when you're you can work the the, the microns at an mm. angle. So I got some duda showing duda, here. Duda, which is one of my favorites. It's so simple. It looks like the the teeth on a, a zipper. Right. As in zippity. Yes. Right. It's a very simple and amazing visual effect. And I love the, this. The, you don't see it until you stop drawing and then you, you set back for a minute. And, oh, my gosh, this is a cool right? tangle, right? And you can do it. Oh, and I so if you, you make want. an... Oh, oops, just... <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> make, make something of it. <laughs> So without that little oops, yeah. there wouldn't be this little zinger, right? Yeah, yeah. But it'll be your favorite part of the whole time, mm -hmm. right? How did you know to do that? Right. Well, the title <laughs> told me to. Right. So it's just a, like a, a nice little touch where maybe no one would even think to, uh, to notice. Right. I love that. Look at that. How fun. Sort of like a ding splat beginning. Yeah. I love ding splats. So there's a nice little so this is present the on the side. back. We're not going to do too much on right, the flip side. Right, this is side, the B side. The B side, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now, now that we've got this. It looks pretty good, right? Sign. Got our chop on there, and you'll notice that in this white, Maria didn't use the tortillon on it, so it's got a different texture, like almost a marbling texture, instead of just the same uh, even white coating. So all of this, you know, it can be in your repertoire. A lot of times I just rub my hand against it lightly mm. to get the excess chalk off. All right. So now we have a, a little bit of uh, mechanical changes yeah, here. Yeah. So I'm taking this thing and making making the hole a little bit bigger. Um, and then probably on the other end too. So exactly, just wiggling this around, getting it large. Making uh, it a little bit bigger using anything around to make things a little bit bigger right now. So you see she's uh, supported either side of the pencil with her two fingers on the and back. On the back, right. And just as much as possible, keeping that hole in the middle. Just ripping it through. There we go. Okay. So... We now have the hole as big as you want it. So I'm, I'm sharpening my pencil, um, but then I'm going to scribble around to make it so that it's not too, uh, it's not too pointy. You want right. it, you want it sharp, but not pointy. But a little rounded, yeah. Right. So I've got a rounded tip. This had to be the last tile, right, in the series, <laughs> because we're going to take your pencil from you. We're going to you. take your pencil, <laughs> and you're never to be seen again. Um, we're going to add a little bit of uh, this magic stuff, the, the Mod Podge, and 
That's it for the tortillon, too. Yeah, well, I took a, one that I knew I didn't use. Got some glue in there. Or some Mod Podge in there. Mod Podge. And we're going to throw the pencil in. And, but not too far through. A you little ways want through. want it to be about, a, what, an inch and a half? An uh, inch like and a half maybe or so, two a inches? third or a little less than a third. Right. Grab the, the About glue. that far. So what you want to look at it and, and have that going pretty straight. And I took that excess that uh, was pushed down on the other side. You could see it. And, and make sure that's sticking really well. And I think I have it on a, a, a glass or something. Right. So that it's, 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 oh, look at me. I have to do that. <laughs> what, no white highlight? <laughs> so How cool. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so thank taking you for, it for a spin. taking <laughs> it for a spin. Thank you so much for having fun with us, and thank you for being with us with us for this whole project pack and the twelve day series. We're going to do a wrap up video after this. Much love, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye now. <laughs>